Princeton University and presenting our work towards failure datasets, filtering and balancing the distribution of the people subtree in the image net hierarchy. We as a community have been talking about this cycle where human history, bias, and prejudice are making their way into large-scale datasets, which are used to train AI models and then become part of our work. In the field of computer vision in particular, datasets have been called out for underrepresenting different racial groups, for perpetuating gender stereotypes, and for overrepresenting different countries, just to name a few. In this work, we take a few steps towards answering the question of why are computer vision datasets biased, and what constructive solutions can we take to mitigate these biases. To do so, we consider one of the arguably most influential datasets of computer vision, ImageNet. ImageNet is a hierarchical ontology of 22,000 labels on more than 14 million images. The scale of the data enabled applying computer vision models to a wide range of social good applications. However, ImageNet was originally created for the task of object recognition, for example, recognizing labels such as hammer, cup, and banana by learning a statistical model from a large collection of annotated images. When ImageNet was constructed in 2009, much of the object recognition work was being done on benchmarks such as Caltech 101 or Pascal VOC, with only about 10,000 images. In contrast, ImageNet curated several orders of magnitudes more data. Um, to collect and verify images at this scale, the ImageNet researchers had to design an automatic pipeline involving large-scale crowdsourcing with thousands of workers. When people talk about ImageNet, frequently they refer only to the ImageNet challenge, which is a subset of 1,000 labels, be uh, which becomes the benchmark for object recognition. However, we take a look at the larger full image net and focus specifically on the set of people labels in the person subtree. There are 2,832 such labels within image net. First, where did these labels even come from? The labels in image net are based on WordNet, a hierarchical ontology of English nouns. WordNet was constructed by linguists and consists of more than 70,000 concepts, including many people labels. So let's zoom in on the person subtree. The first issue we address is that there are potentially problematic labels. For example, racist. Racist is legitimate as a pure English noun in WordNet, but becomes problematic when illustrated with images in ImageNet. Although 94 of the concepts in the person subtree were flagged as offensive and were re by the WordNet and were excluded from ImageNet, the rest were included leading to our work. In the first constructive solution we proposed, we ran a study annotating the unsafe labels in the person subtree. We consider a label to be unsafe if it is either inherently offensive, for example, containing profanity, racial slurs, or gender slurs, or it's not inherently offensive but sensitive. It may cause offense when applied inappropriately, for example, classification of people based on religion and sexual orientation. The annotation was done in-house by 12 graduate students and resulted in 1,593 out of 2,832 labels in the person subtree identified as unsafe. In addition, we consider that some concepts may be safe but difficult to characterize visually using images. For example, consider the concept of a philanthropist. While a positive term in and of itself, illustrating it with images inevitably leads to a stereotyped representation, as it is very difficult to tell if someone is a philanthropist by looking at an image and without relying on one's preconceived notions of philanthropist. It's natural to ask, why were such non-imageable labels in ImageNet in the first place? The images were collected using web search engines by querying for the concept, for example, philanthropist, and then manually verifying the returned search results by asking crowd workers to select all images that contain a philanthropist. The workers ended up selecting images that look to them the most like philanthropists from the options provided by the search engines, even if that did not accurately reflect the concept. Further, when working at the scale of millions of images, even if sometimes the workers were confused and answered randomly, statistically speaking, some images still became verified as philanthropists. This leads to our second constructive solution to counteract this search engine and annotation artifacts. We explicitly annotate the imageability of the person labels. 
rather than verifying images, we ask crowd workers on Amazon Mechanic 2 to annotate the imageability score of concept on a scale of one to five in terms of how imageable it is. That is to say, how easy it is to form a mental image of the, of the concept. As a result, we determined that only 158 out of the 1,239 safe labels are actually imageable. And finally, what about the images themselves? We observed that they may contain a biased representation of demographics. Why? These images were taken from web search engines, which have been known for retrieving biased results in terms of demographics. During the construction of ImageNet, researchers took measures to diversify the images. First, they performed query expansion using different keywords related to the same concept for querying the search engine. Second, in order to get images from multiple cultures, they also translated the keywords into multiple languages. However, despite these measures, we still observe that bias and misrepresentation exist in the distribution of images in ImageNet. And this leads to our third constructive solution. We annotated demographics for images from all safe and imageable labels. We chose to annotate gender, skin color, and age. This figure shows a distribution across all annotated labels, providing a glimpse at the representation of different groups within the datasets. This provides transparency into the datasets, similar to what many great works have done before. Take gender as an example. The blue area in the first figure is larger than the green area which suggests overall there are more men than women in the images. For most labels, only a small number of images were annotated as unsure, but there are two interesting exceptions. Uh, scuba diver and birth. These two labels have a significant number of instances whose gender cannot be identified. It's difficult to infer the gender of a person in a scuba suit or the gender of a newborn baby. The skin color and age annotation shows a similar uh, imbalanced demographics. So what next? We will release the new version of the person subtree incorporating our proposed changes. We are in the process of updating image and hardware, but hope to have this available soon. Second, we will allow user reporting of additional unsafe and non-image labels. Different people have different views regarding offensiveness and imageability, and our results here only represent the views of our annotators. Therefore, we propose to open this question to the community. Third, we, we will use our demographic annotation to provide a web interface for researchers to balance the distribution of images across demographics. The optimal demographic distribution depends on a complex series of issues, such as um, culture and geographic location, so we leave it up to the researchers to specify their target distribution. And finally, in our ongoing work, we are investigating issues with other labels outside the person subtree. My co-author, Professor Olga Rostakovsky, who also was the lead author of the Image Challenge paper, uh, will join us for Q&A. Thank you.